Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about electrode potential and electromotive force that is EMF. When we make a galvanic cell, we have to be very much careful while choosing the electrodes that is anode and cathode. So on what basis do we choose the anode and cathode for a galvanic cell? Similarly, what is the reason behind the production of electricity in galvanic cell? In this video, we are going to understand everything about that. So let's start. A galvanic cell consists of two electrodes. One of them behaves as anode, another one behaves as cathode. And as electricity flows in galvanic cell, that clearly indicates that there is some potential difference between the two electrodes. And to understand the potential difference, let us consider a general redox reaction in which there is a metal M which is kept in a solution containing its own ion that is M N plus. Here N plus simply means how many positive charge is over there. This N clearly indicates a number. Okay. So, we are considering a redox reaction in which there is a metal M that is the electrode and that gives, uh, sorry, that is kept in a solution containing its own ion MN plus. Then there are three cases. Let us discuss all the those cases one by one. In the first case, the metal M collides with MN plus that is the metal ion and they do not undergo any change. Let me write that. The metal M collides with metal ion that is Mn plus and do not undergo any change, any change. Let's see this in a diagram. Suppose this is the beaker and here it is, it is the electrode, okay, the metal M. In the solution, it can find M N plus, right? It will collide with metal and it will just return back. That means there is no change over here. As you can see here, no electron is being generated. That means there won't be any flowing of electricity in this case. So this type of electrode is called this type of electrode is called a null electrode, a null electrode that means there won't be any flowing of electricity in this type of cell. So obviously this is completely useless type of cell for us. Now let's see the second case. In the second case the metal ion collides with the metal and acquires some of the electrons of metal and converts it into the positive terminal. Let me write that the metal ion that is Mn plus ion collides with metal M and acquires some electrons, some electrons, actually N electrons and convert the electrode into a positive terminal positive terminal here we are talking about gain of electron what is the gain of electron yes you are correct it is reduction right that is reduction occurs let me try to explain this in diagram so this is the beaker, there is this metal over here, there is M and this M will convert into M and plus and electron minus and electron minus. There is M and plus in the solution as well, right? And this electron will be acquired by this M and plus and it will directly convert to M and get deposited on the electrode again. Let me explain it one more time. The metal 
from the metal this mn plus acquires the electron and this gets deposited on the metal again converting into it into a positive a positive terminal of the battery positive terminal simply means cathode cathode of the battery this type of case arises when the metal has relatively higher tendency to get reduced look at here here the metal is being reduced that means it is gaining the metal ion is gaining the electron that means reduction process is happening over there and as a result of that you can see over here there is this electron this electron will now be able to migrate and this in this case electricity might flow and this is the reduction half of the galvanic cell and as you can see over here there is this metal and continuous forming metal ion as well so uh sorry an equilibrium an equilibrium exists exists between between metal and metal ion in this case so there will be an equilibrium between the metal and metal ion in this case that is the metal ion will gain electron and it will convert into metal this mn plus is the solution or the in the aqueous form this it gets from the metal from the metal and it finally forms the solid metal or simply you can say the electrode so this is the second case now let's see the third case in the third case if the metal has relatively high tendency to get oxidized then it will start to lose electrons but those electrons will be accumulated on the electrode itself making it the negative terminal and it passes all the metal ions to the solution let me write that if the metal has relatively high tendency to get oxidized then it will release electrons which will be present which will be present on the electrode which will be present on the electrode making it a negative terminal and passes all the metal ions to the solution to the solution let's try to understand that this by a diagram here let us consider this is the electrode and here it is the electrolyte there is this metal this will give electrons and it will pass all the metal ions to the solution and it will give electrons that will be accumulated on the metal itself that means this electron will not go anywhere making it a negative terminal because of this electron this will be a negative terminal and negative terminal means this is the anodic part right this is the anode of the battery and oxidation reaction happens over here oxidation reaction happens over here so in this case as well look at here this mn plus and electron is being formed so there will be an equilibrium between metal and metal ion let's write that an equilibrium an equilibrium will exist between between metal and metal ion like as metal will lose the electrons it will get converted to mn plus and an e minus this is the solid or the metal right metal electrode this is aqueous form this will be passed to the solution okay that you need to understand and this comes uh, this will stay there so to the metal this will not go anywhere so this will stay on the electrode making it the negative 
terminal. As you can see that there is this generation of electron, then this electron will try to stop the formation of more metal ions. The electrons will try to stop the formation the formation of more metal ions more metal ions formation means more electrons being formation and electron electron get repulse uh, there is repulsion between electron and electron right so it will try to stop the metal from forming more metal ions and try to try to reattract try to reattract the ions to get neutralized neutralize it will try to gain all the this will try to reattract these metal ions in order to get neutralized so this happens in the oxidation half that is the anode now let's understand what the potential difference or electrode potential actually is now we know that in oxidation half and reduction half the metal and metal ions will be in equilibrium that leads to the separation of charges let me write that in oxidation half and reduction half the metal and metal ions will be in will be in equilibrium equilibrium that leads to that leads to the separation of charges that leads to the separation of charges it indicates it indicates the formation formation or development of of potential difference potential difference between them between them so that uh, separation of charges will indicates that there is the development of potential difference between them the electrical potential difference potential difference of the electrodes electrodes is called electrode potential electrode potential so that electrical potential difference between the electrodes it itself called the electrode potential of that electrode or there is one more way to define it in other words in other words this electrode potential simply can be defined as the tendency the tendency of an electrode electrode to either lose or gain electrons is called electrode potential electrode potential so it is the tendency of an electrode to either lose or gain electron how easily it can lose electron or how easily it can get electron it depends on that so this is what we call an electrode potential there are two types of electrode potential the first one is oxidation potential oxidation potential and the second one is reduction potential reduction potential oxidation potential simply means the tendency to tendency to lose electron example you can say like zinc converting into zinc ion plus two electrons this is an example of oxidation potential similarly reduction potential means tendency to gain electrons an example of that may be 
क्यूप्लस आयोन वेन गेन्स टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इट विल कन्वर्ट इन टू कॉपर सोलियड सो दिस इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड वॉट इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल एक्चुअली इज नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इलेक्ट्रोमोटिव फोर्स एक्चुअली इज अ गैल्वेनिक सेल इज मेड अप ऑफ टू हाफ सेल्स दैट इज टू इलेक्ट्रोड्स एंड एज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फ्लोज इन अ गैल्वेनिक सेल दैट मीन्स देर हैज टू बी सर्टन डिफरेंस इन द इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल बिटवीन देम लेट मी राइट दैट a galvanic cell is made up of two half cells that is two electrodes right and some potential difference or electrode potential some electrode potential difference causes causes the current to flow to flow so i have written here obviously a galvanic cell has two electrodes and they have different electrode potential that causes the electrons to flow as a result of that electricity will flow over there now as they have two different electrode potential then obviously one of them must have higher value of electrode potential another one must have lower value of electrode potential the electrons the electrons move from one electrode from one electrode that is higher electrode potential to another electrode which have lower electrode potential So as you can see over here, one of the electrode must have higher value of electrode potential. Another electrode must have lower value of electrode potential. And the electrons move from higher value of electrode potential to the lower value of electrode potential. Now this difference in the potential causes the electrons to flow, right? So the difference, the difference. in the electrode potential causes causes the electrons to flow and that is called electromotive force electromotive force so it is defined as it is defined as as the force which causes the force which causes the electrons electrons to flow in a galvanic cell in a galvanic cell is called okay in a galvanic cell so this is the definition of electromotive force it can also be defined as the difference between the electrode potential of the two cell the difference between the electrode potential of two cells is called e m f electromotive force so you can define e m f in any way you want whichever you feel easy you can write that definition in your examination as well mathematically mathematically this e cell that is the electromotive force or overall potential of cell can be calculated by the formula e 
रिडक्शन माइनस ई ऑक्सीडेशन सो ई रिडक्शन मीन्स द ऑक्सीडेशन पोटेंशियल ऑफ रिडक्शन हाफ और सिंपली यू कैन से कैथोड एंड सिमिलरली ई ऑक्सीडेशन मीन्स द इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल ऑफ ऑक्सीडेशन हाफ और यू कैन से ए नोड नाउ इफ यू सी अ सेल नोटेशन इन सेल नोटेशन लेट मी राइट द सेल नोटेशन ऑफ गैल्वेनिक सेल इन विच जिंक कन्वर्ट्स टू जेड एन टू प्लस आई एम नॉट राइटिंग सम डिफरेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन इन द ब्रैकेट सी यू टू प्लस कन्वर्ट्स इन टू सी यू सो दिस इज हाउ वी राइट द सेल नोटेशन ऑफ ए डेनियल सेल ओके दिस इज द डेनियल सेल नोटेशन नाउ यू कैन सी ओवर हियर दिस इज द फर्स्ट हाफ दिस इज द सेकेंड हाफ एंड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर द फर्स्ट हाफ इज फॉर एनोड एंड द सेकेंड हाफ इज फॉर कैथोड or you can simply understand the first half is always for oxidation and the second half is always for the reduction so here from the formula what do we see first of all it comes reduction then oxidation right so you can simply write the formula e r minus e l r means right value l means left value okay so you can use any formula between them whichever formula you want to use you can use that and you will get the value of oxidation potential of the cell now one more thing we need to understand over here is that the oxidation potential of overall cell depends on the oxidation potential of reduction half and oxidation half in individual state that means when the cell is not working then we need to find the value of e reduction and e oxidation by some method and if we find the value uh, if the if we find the difference of the, their values then we get the value of potential of the overall cell that is a mathematical value and that is calculated by using a potentiometer so this is what the electromotive force actually is i hope you understood everything about electromotive force that's all in this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video